Hello everybody, it's Shubham here from Foodgenics. We are back with our third interview today uh, in our recently launched uh, Formula for FMCG and Food Tech Government Job series. Uh, through this series, we try to enlighten and uh, educate the masses of food technologists and engineers uh, about the career prospects in the different domains of food engineering and technology. Uh, if you haven't checked out our previously launched videos uh, related to getting placement offers at Mondelez and yeah, cracking a government job at BIS Scientist, uh, then please click on the I button to access those videos. So today we have a very special guest with us, uh, one of my dearest seniors at uh, Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai, uh, and a mentor to many of us currently in the food technology community. So, hello Salman sir uh, from the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. How are you doing Salman sir? Hi Shubham, I am doing great. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me for this global session. I am so uh, happy and uh, privileged to be part of or to get associated with the food genius. Thank you. Thank you, Bhaiya, and it's also it's a great thing that you could give us a little bit of time amidst your busy schedule. You're traveling all across the country with so much responsibility on your shoulders. So thank you for that as well. So uh, a little bit about Salman, sir, before we get to the interview. So Salman, uh, sir, is currently working as technical officer at the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. You also know it as FSSI. Uh, he is a food engineer. He has done his uh, bachelor's in food process engineering from IIFPT Indian Institute of Food Processing and Technology from Thanjavur, Tamil Nadu. He has completed his M.Tech uh, in food engineering and technology from the Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai. Uh, if you talk about, uh, if we uh, know about his expertise, he has a lot of expertise in different domains. Uh, so food regulatory affairs, food licensing, uh, even sensory ev evaluation, trace innovation, preventive control and a lot of other domains as well. Uh, he is a man of many interests, he's not only that conventional engineer that we know, he also uh, is very much involved in public speaking, mentoring students like us and future generation food engineers and engineers in general. Uh, also, he uh, likes to do give career guidance, uh, uh, talk about food regulations, and he's also doing mass, uh, uh, you know, career guidance uh, sessions for students ac across the country right now. Uh, previously, Salman sir, I believe, uh, has also worked uh, as R&D personal R&D scientist at Thinking Fox uh, as a development scientist. He has also interned at. Mondelez International um, uh, in their R&D intern R&D beverages uh, sector and also in Nestle India as a production intern. Uh, so uh, welcome again, uh, Salman sir, and uh, I hope uh, you, uh, as like the inspiration that you are to us, you will be an inspiration to everybody in the coming generations as well. Thank you, Shubham, for your kind words. Yeah. So. So the main uh, talk topic about today's discussion, we'll try to keep it light and breezy, not uh, much serious, uh, so that you know we can uh, reach out to the maximum masses. So, uh, so how is your current uh, work life progressing, Bhaiya? Like, uh, where are you currently posted, and uh, how are you spending your days now? Yeah. Uh, sure, as of now, I am uh, posted at Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Now taking care of licensing and enforcement activities uh, at the state of Gujarat. So yeah, as of now, I'm like uh, pretty happy regarding the career progress or the learning curve which I'm having. Because you know, every day morning, I'm every day you know now I'm learning new new stuff. You know, person like me, like uh, com coming from a background of R and D and coming into government, and you know, you learn a lot of stuff like especially this. You know, government procedures is completely qualified. So we are learning all those stuff, and and you know, food regulation is something very really kind of confusing or sometimes you know quite difficult. So you know, uh, learning all these stuff makes happy. And you know, uh, as a person, I don't like to stay stagnant. So I am pretty happy with what I am doing now. Yeah, kind of, uh, there is some sort of life work-life balance now. So yeah, happy with that. Yeah. 
so work life balance that's a very important term that you used and obviously that that is where uh, all the te- technical people fail and that is where you, you know you have to learn a lot as you progress in life uh, salman sir coming to this position of uh, technical officer at fssi that you are currently serving mm-hmm. as so what exactly made you interested towards uh pursuing this career in this domain like was it the government tag or was it the role in itself what was it uh i don't think it was due to government tag because you know i was not at all aware about any sort of because in my if you look into my family background there's no one in the government sector as such everyone okay. gets, uh, everyone is in private jobs or some sort of business or small business so for me it was all about the interest which i generated in fsa because you know that in that 2014 when i joined from the bachelors it was the then when i learned uh, learned about fsa and you know i tried in 2015 to get an internship there but unfortunately or fortunately so unfortunately maybe uh, due to this academic schedule you know mm-hmm. i was not able to get into that internship but yeah uh, that's when it the interest started so yeah it's not about the government perks rather it's all about the role So it's the role is pretty interesting. You know, uh, you are learning a lot of stuff. You know, every day and out you are learning a lot of stuff. I'm pretty sure that everyone will enjoy here then. because this kind of there's a lot of uh, you know thinking involved. In, involved, not like not like a typical uh, so-called government job, but mm. there's a lot of scope for interpretation. So you are using all your knowledge gained over a period of six years, seven years, or eight years. You are putting out here. testing the, those knowledge and uh, trying to understand this uh, legal complications or issues so mm. you know, it's all about it's, it, it, i think it's all about uh, interdisciplinary approach mm. so yeah i think that i'm i'm literally enjoying the role so it's not like the conventional that that the kind of en- we envision the government jobs like it's yeah, very uh, innovation driven and uh, a lot of things combined together so uh, great to know about that so obviously so like uh, coming to what our next you know things that we wonder when we hear that somebody is working at fssi or in this role is that uh, what should like aspiring uh, uh, technical officers or uh, fssi aspirants like us or our viewers viewers should expect in a job profile like this like uh, what can be what do you think can be their key learnings and Uh, their key deliverables according to you okay. maybe so uh the key learning is essentially uh, you know first thing is that uh, in any government service where this public administration or public interaction comes right there is such sense of maturity mm-hmm. for anyone to get you know uh, coming from uh, some, some sort of corporate background you, we think it's very easy but not at all because you know in government setup is setting in a different way and Correct. people always watch us our behavior how we are handling people you know be, being a public servant we are supposed to serve the uh, public right so that's one aspect one one big learning second thing i'm pretty sure that uh, no i'm not talking about technical as well rather you know uh, you will learn a lot of uh, you know how to handle people the mm. people management is a key skill which you will gain over the period of time the thing is that uh, you uh, you will get a chance to uh, interact with a lot of people and try to get a precise understanding of what you are doing right that's something which we get in the corporate also but here uh, you know in being at the say we get lot of opportunity to uh, interact with lot of uh, scientists across india mm. uh, that actually actually teaches how we can progress in the uh, career And obviously, the field regulatory affairs is something great. It's such a vast field of knowledge. You know, there is lot of scope uh, for field regulatory affairs, affair professional in India and abroad. So yeah, learning uh, this stuff, uh, there's lot of learning happening in that spectrum. Mm. And so yeah, regarding uh, learning, deliverable. See, uh, uh, as a technical officer, we are supposed to uh, see the this particular role is essentially mix of admin kind of work sometimes. And lot of technical work. So if you can say is that eighty to hundred kind, eighty percent of technical mm-hmm. work and sometimes admin work. So the majority of our work uh, involved in guiding food business operators uh, regarding this legal complications. For example, okay. 
yesterday I got a query from one of the leading company uh, mm -hmm. regarding uh, FSA logo to be uh, how it should be presented. So uh, it's the time. So you know, it's not a single as uh, individual activity, rather to say team activity, because you know we have a lot of different perception. Mm -hmm. So first, the goal is to help the views. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second, the uh, would be uh, you know uh, to engage and. Uh, to complete the work assigned by the uh, work assigned through the government policies or mm. regulation. Mm. Now we have this license mailers in which we try to help the two business operators to get their license. Correct. So manner. Uh, third thing would be obviously uh, as a technical officer, we see uh, as of now there is two different posts in the FSA that is technical officer and the central food safety officer. Food safety officer. So central food safety officer is has been notified and they are supposed to go out into the field and to have all this sort of enforcement activities. Okay, so as a technical officer, uh, it's my responsibility to have uh, to give all the regulatory support to a central food safety officer. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, obviously, see, you know, central food safety officer will be looking for enforcement activities because it's a very qualified thing. It takes a lot of time. So it's my responsibility to go out and to look into the non-compliances as such and to inform him. So he will take. See, the thing is that I I am not notified to do the enforcement activity. Ah, Rather, correct. I'll be assisting uh, my central food safety officer regarding all these aspects. All, all these aspects, correct. And I have other uh, work we generally does is that uh, you know uh, we have the like, food, food te technical officers are doing all this uh, improvement notices regarding. Uh, say for example, if there's some some sort of uh, non-compliance observed, you know, for example, if an e-commerce platform uh, is selling some food which is uh, with a lot of outright food claims like uh, anti-cancer or something like ah, that. So it comes into our observation, what we do is that we uh, try to put up an informal notice and give them time to comply with that. Comply. If you not comply, there will be some sort of uh, other system like for post notice and all the stuff. You know. So that's another part and all, all this admin related work, we, we have a constant uh, Constant meeting with the uh, regional office, uh, head office. We have a lot of letter draft, drafting and all this. Yes, yeah, kind of mix of a technical you know, job and kind of an admin related job. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Overall, uh, I think uh, as uh, over a period of one or two years, you may uh, you may mature as a complete government professional you know, in your technical field and you know, health expertise and also you know uh, government procedures. Hmm. So, obviously, since we knew, we these things we don't generally know, yeah, being yeah. an outsider and uh, we try to imagine things and all, but one more thing is that uh, your day-to-day -day life, does it comprise of, you know, like, there's so much of, con there might be conflicts, there might be some negotiations, so, uh, like, what's your day-to-day -day life like uh, at FSSI currently? But the day-to-day -day life is kind of no, nothing like a schedule as such. Huh. You know, time, we, as, uh, generally we don't have any particular time. But the office starts by 9, 9.30. Hmm. But you know, there is no end time. It's all depends upon the work. Work you that you have. Correct. Some days, uh, like recently, uh, I had this, uh, from, I started office by 9.45 so to 6 o'clock. And went to my home and then I got my, uh, I got a call from my, uh, my senior. To attend uh, to attend a particular case, during which I had to travel all the way by like, three hours and attend them and came back. So I came back by three o'clock. So you know you uh, there is some sense of uh, you know stability, but still you know as a government servant, a public servant, you are you are always on work. On mm -hmm. hours you are at work. You you should be available at any point of time. So yeah, and that's the thing. The the majority of um on a, a normal day. My work starts uh, uh, start with the basic admin procedures once upon reaching there because you know as of now we don't have any admin professionals here so uh, all the activities of office is taken by me and my colleagues okay uh, Achha, so, so know, that's uh, a that's an extra work, work and a new experience as well experience, yeah for example you know uh, in government setup you know we are supposed to uh, record every incoming letters and every outcoming letter so that Okay. That may seem very simple, but simple. You know, it takes a lot of, you know, as a person, you're new to this system, right? So, 
that's first yeah, that that is the usual first thing done then you know all of the like uh, we can work mails from the food business operators we try to the first two hours we'll be trying to clear that particular doubt as a team uh, or sometimes it is such a difficult uh, like there are multiple instances where we get hmm. such a confusing query we try to have a, a interaction uh, with our team and try to sort it out then obviously for, if, as it is going from there then there is a drafting of email of those aspects then we start our uh, scrutiny so you know being part of this licensing team first first team how majority of work uh, lies around the uh, licensing of uh, uh, or scrutinization of applications applications for food businesses food correct businesses. correct so, correct uh, generally uh, it can get complicated sometimes you know uh, we get these applications for new pharmaceuticals and new pharmaceuticals and the proprietary foods are one of the most difficult thing you know it takes it consumes a lot of time so we work on that and then yeah you uh, like most most of the time we get a lot of food business operators visiting our offices to clear a lot of queries so, and uh, to help them on uh, on the phosphorus uh, aspects so mm-hmm. phosphorus is a portal for licensing Achha. and similarly uh, and similarly you know uh, we have a lot of we we guide the state team so yeah there was a lot of queries from the state team so we try to uh, help them as well and there's a lot of com- combined activity with the foods, uh, other departments also for example if you are in import there's a lot of uh, activity where you are going along a uh, tag along with the customs uh, animal quarantine plant quarantine so yeah and we also in licensing also we have sometimes uh, combined operation with the police of the state mm, uh, sometimes okay. the yeah sometimes the district collectors come come down to clear something so yeah all these aspects happen uh, daily so yeah this kind of uh, nothing is uh, fixed as a nothing is yeah. fixed for mm. now a lot of and things and majority of this, uh, like sometimes we are also attending some sort of inspections so yeah we uh, like whenever there is a consumer complaint uh we along with the food center food safety officer go out to the field and try to understand so investigations happen quite a time you know recently we got complaint so we three of our uh, teammates went down to the company and tried to evaluate their complaint in a critical way. So yeah, all these aspects, all these activities happen every now and then. Hmm. Okay. So uh, not it's not a closed atmosphere like a maybe a private sector where fixed duty is assigned, but here a yeah. lot of things. Even I think uh, you have also have to handle I think imports and exports. Those areas also might you might have to handle yeah. as well. Earlier. Import division, so you know the the kind of work is quite different from quite different license, quite different from the licensing team. Rather, the majority of our time will be uh, given because import is something where there is lot of money is involved. Correct, correct. There, there is lot of movement happens. So mm-hmm. There is no much. Uh, there is no luxury of time there. You know, you are supposed mm-hmm. to act swiftly. And then uh, second thing will be like after inspection that. Decision making doesn't have any sort of time. You mm. you are not having that luxury. So you are supposed to take the uh, decision uh, at the moment, instance. And then uh, we also in, in import we also help the food business operator to understand what is the regulation mm. and what can be done if there is some sort of like if for example there is multiple instances where we ask for queries, so uh, ask for some sort of development uh, or improvisation in the rectification or something like that. So. We does that as the person. We does help them uh, how to be with this aspect, how should be there. In that one. As a technical officer, we also look after a lot of trainings. Ah. Uh, we we are supposed to take care of a lot of licensing training. Ah. Achha. Yeah. Okay, so that part is also there. So hmm. okay. Uh, so that that was a very great explanation. I would say gave us a bit of sneak peek into the whole job profile. As in what people are yeah. getting into, they don't, uh, they are not actually aware of these things. So thank you yeah. for that, uh, Salman sir. Uh, so uh, obviously, one small thing, if you can tell us briefly, that you have worked in some private sectors as well as yeah. scientists or as interns. So maybe one or two most important points which you have found different from these private sectors and the government job. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, okay, the first and foremost thing difference would be that uh, 
uh, in public sector, you know, a government sector, you are always, you know, 20, you are always supposed to be available for this 24 hours period mm. of time. Mm. Or you should be always at the end of the form, you know, where if there is some sort of urgent work, you can be called upon any time, you know. Okay. That's first thing. So, even though there is some sort of stability, but, you know, you can't say that, you can't deny that, uh, sir, my office, uh -huh. office is you know, that's, that's the first thing that any government professional law will be trying to understand that 24 hours of time you are supposed to be here. If in case you are going out of the station of some sort of trip, uh, for instance, you are supposed to put up a mail to your reporting officer, say, suggesting that I won't be available from this to this particular time. We are going through this one. So, you know, uh, that's one aspect, the difference. And, you know, uh, you've been always watched, okay, it has, it has a government uh, set up, you have been always been watched by your superior, that is, uh, that is close, uh, closely observed by the consumers or maybe in mm. the close, you know. Uh, any decision made now shouldn't be different for when you are taking the next step. You know, that can create a lot of problems. Cause a lot of problems. This part of efforts I am mean, talking in general, but in efforts say, you know, it should be all the same. You are, we are, you are looking to the same location and same clause. And if two different appeals are being given two different opinions regarding the same, uh, uh, it won't create a lot of conflicts. Right? Correct, so correct. That's one thing. And yeah, so that's the two things. And third thing is that at the end, you know, uh, I, as a person, I feel very happy that I'm some way serving the nation. Nation, correct. Some way I'm uh, trying to help someone. So, yeah. But, in, uh, so, you know, uh, the next thing, you know, uh, government procedures is strict and it's qualified. No one can bypass it, you know. Mm. So, everything is written, everything is, should be documented. So, if you, if you look into the private sector, now every other for big, big uh, food business, companies are looking for something called as agile, agile movement. So we mm. try to short down the uh, process by skipping some uh, two or three steps. Mm. You can do that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, everything should be following the strict course. So strict. that's the difference. Okay. So obviously, you know, uh, uh, being in FSA, uh, my majority of my work stays close to food public affairs and licensing. That's it. So, but if you go to the country, uh, FMCG side, so you will be like more over uh, exposed to uh, into ending in product development and there will be a lot of instances where you try to understand consumer uh, science parts mm -hmm. and you will also get a, a basic understanding of regulatory as well. So yeah, the, the scope is much more wider. Here, scope is limited to regulatory affairs and other things. Got it, got it. Mm -hmm.